Good afternoon, Mogul Chicks. It's Adrienne Graham from Mogul Chicks, and I am coming to you again with another Facebook Live. Uh, I'm still a little bit under the weather, but we're going to get through this. We're going to champion through this. Um, I would take a knee, but <laughs> little joke. Anyway, well, thank you for tuning in, and those of you who are watching the replay, thank you for taking the time to watch. I am so excited about today's. Uh, topic. Well, not excited as much as, uh, yeah, excited. I guess you could say excited about it. Um, <clears throat> if you are on my mailing list, you know what I'm talking about, about uh, the subject of becoming obsolete or your company becoming or your product or your brand or your service becoming obsolete. And I am very, very much a person that considers herself to be ever evolving. I love to be able to constantly be in a state of evolution with my company because I honestly believe that if you're not constantly learning, you're not growing. And if you're not growing, then your company is at jeopardy. Uh, when I sent out my, my newsletter yesterday, it was done so based on an article that I had writ, uh, uh, read, not written, they had read about Uber. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard, but London, the city of London, has denied Uber's license request to renew it. And it brought up a lot of questions for me. And then it made me start thinking about other things that are in the news, like Toys R Us with their impending bankruptcy. And just all of the different companies in history who have gone out of business or have become useless or obsolete or just out of vogue, I guess you can say. So I want to touch on that a little bit today. Um, this is not a class or a training or anything like that. This is really just something for you to think. I want you to get those minds flowing and those creative juices flowing, and I want you guys to really think about this going forward with your own companies. So let's start off with the reasons why companies, products, and brands become obsolete to begin with. Now, you guys have to excuse me because I'm still <coughs> struggling with this cold, this flu, and everything, so I sound a little bit horrible. And I may have to stop every now and then to take a drink of water. But anyway, but the three reasons, here are the three reasons why companies, brands, and products become obsolete. Let me give that to you from the, from the jump. Number one, function. Number two, lack of interest. Number three, regulatory changes. Now, there are many more. Good. Hey, Jade. Hey, Leticia. Jade says she has her, her pen and paper ready. Uh, there are many more reasons why companies and brands and products become obsolete, but today I'm only going to focus on three of them. Um, what I hope to introduce in the next round of Mogul Chicks Academy is this very topic because my ladies and I, we've talked about ways to keep your company diversified, ways to keep them in the public mind and keeping your customers interested. But this itself was presented to me as a topic, and I think it's a very important topic. So I'm going to be introducing this in the next round of Mogul Chicks. So, and those of you who are in Mogul Chicks, I'll, when I do get to it and record it, I'll send you guys a copy of it. But anyway, let's start with function. So the usefulness has run out. Um, it's not used anymore. It's not beneficial anymore to the core audience. So let's give an example of that. One of the case studies I want to talk about today is Blockbuster Video. Now, I don't care if I'm dating myself. I'm very proud of how old I am. I'm 48. But a lot of you remember Blockbuster Video. And what was the other one? Uh, Hollywood Video, I think, was the other one that we had <clears throat> in the early 2000s. But Blockbuster Video had a very simple premise. You don't want to go to the movies. You want to be able to rent a movie for a cheap price, maybe get some snacks, popcorn, soda. They had these little things in there as well. And you can have a date night at home. Well, that still works to a certain degree. Now we have Redbox, and now we have Netflix, and what are the other streaming services that are available too. But the point is, Blockbuster had a very solid business model, and they were not on the cutting edge. They were not paying attention to what was going on in the industry, <coughs> in the market, excuse me, and didn't expect technology to come through and disrupt them. Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry, <clears throat> my throat is on fire. But they didn't expect technology to come through and just rip apart their business. When people started learning how to build streaming services and they started learning that they didn't have to go into stores, and even when they shifted from cassettes, 
VHS cassettes. Yeah, I said VHS cassettes. I don't care. Date me, label me. I don't care. That's what we used to watch back in the day. Okay. At least I didn't say data max. Anyway, they, you know, went from cassette and they caught up with the DVD revolution. We'll compact this and then DVD. I'm not going to go through the evolution, but they thought that they had covered all their bases. And said, okay, we got this. We got this. And then they saw Netflix come along. And Netflix came along and Netflix just disrupted the whole movie industry, the whole video entertainment industry by allowing people to order DVDs from their homes. Blockbuster didn't see this coming. We as a society, I hate to say this, but we're getting lazy as a society. And a lot of times there are, in, there are areas where we want more by putting out less effort. So it's easy <clears throat> for you if you have a, a company or a product or a service that requires people to actually put in work and it's moving the trend towards DIY or less work, you know, it's going to be harder for you. It's going to have an impact on your business. So Blockbuster failed because they were functionally obsolete. If you're in real estate, you understand that term. In real estate, the term means functional obsolete means that the, the flow of the house isn't right. Like, say the bathroom is right next to the kitchen or there's a stairway to go up and across to go into across the living room, into the bedroom. I'm just throwing that out there. But functional obsolescence, and that's what happened to Blockbuster. They, become, they became functionally obsolete. You don't want your company to become functionally obsolete. And then, <clears throat> even now, Redbox is struggling because... <clears throat> people said, well, it's cheaper than what Blockbuster was, and it's cheaper than you. I don't have to be locked into a subscription with Netflix. So Redbox was the thing. Now they have Redbox, and they have they up their prices a little bit, and now they have the, the member pass and all this other stuff. So Redbox is trying to learn from Blockbuster's experience and Netflix's experiences to craft their own way to make sure that they're not functionally obsolete. Now, I will say this. Yes, I do still go to the movies if it's a movie that interests me enough. And yeah, I use Redbox. I am over at Redbox at least twice a month renting videos <clears throat> because I'm trying to keep it low. You know, I don't want to do streaming because I don't want to do all of that. But anyway, so you don't want to become functionally obsolete. So the second one was lack of interest. People move on. Competitors build new, bigger, better mousetraps, and things change. They offer a better service, a better product, a better promise, and people are fickle. People move on from what they think they no longer need. Now, if you have a service company, and let's say your service is something that people need, and then once they use that service, they have no more use for you. You're kind of pushing yourself into that Lack of interest, borderline functional obsolescence for, for some customers. But it's important to pay attention. How many ways can you diversify? How many ways can you service that customer? How can you keep that customer coming back for additional services? Now, hear me when I say this. That does not mean that I want you to create a billion and one service and products to offer to customers. Be strategic about it. If you need help with that, we can help you with that at Mobile Chicks. But be strategic about it. You have to understand. There's something that I teach that those of you who will watch this and those of you who are watching this who are in the academy know that I have something called figuring out your primary, secondary, and tertiary customers. I feel that customer, uh, companies that do that and understand that and stay ahead of that will be able to determine the trends in the past. They'll be able to make money regardless of which way the market goes. But if you're not paying attention, if you don't break it down by primary, secondary, tertiary customers, you stand to lose money. People will lose interest. I can work with the company, let's say back in my days, in my recruiting days, I can work with the company to find them all the talent that they want and get them fully staffed. But guess what? Once they're fully staffed, they don't need me anymore. Lack of interest. I'm not useful anymore. But if I turned around and then offer the same clients ways to manage their employee process, manage their orientation process, manage their HR functions, now we're talking. We're adding a little bit more that we can put into the, into the bargaining pot. 
So you have to think of ways that you can expand your, your offerings so that you're not left out in the cold, so your customers are not bored, so they don't feel that, you know what, this is it, I've done everything I could with you. It's kind of like, and what I tell to people who choose to go into the coaching profession, and you guys know my feelings about coaches, most coaches, um, I think that you set yourself up for a churn and burn if you're not paying attention to what your, how your customer or your client grows, how they evolve and how they change and how you can meet that change. So don't be caught up in something where people move on from what you offer. And the third one was regulatory changes. <coughs> Excuse me. At any given time, the government can say, no, oh, putting regulations in place, you can no longer do this. Oh, we're cutting this so these kind of companies are no longer able to function. They're not authorized to do X, Y, and Z. They can be government changes. They can be new rules. They can be new ways of, of registering companies. And, and I forget the word I'm looking for, but process the red tape that the government will put you through. And a lot of times people will say, you know what, instead of dealing with all that red tape, I'm just going to leave. I'm going to bounce. I'm not dealing with this. I'll find another way to do something different. So you got to be careful as in the case of Uber. Now Uber has its own string of problems, but any state, any city, any country at any time can decide, no, we don't want to approve ride sharing. It's disruptive. It's messing with the taxi industry. It's messing with the transportation industry. And it has, because look at Ford. Now, I don't know if you guys know this story, but Ford acquired a company called Shuttle. Was it Shuttle? I think it was Shuttle. Um, yeah, I think it was Shuttle. And, and my, my Mobile Chicks Academy, you guys know I've talked about this before. But Ford acquired it because they wanted to have that service, that car sharing, car ride service for the van, the van space. So they bought that to get ahead of the curve to make sure that they were part of an industry and that they were keeping up with the times and that they were not limiting their opportunities. So you guys have to pay attention to what's going on with the regulations. Now, Uber, <clears throat> we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going what's gonna to happen. I do know this. Uber has gained enough popularity, love them or like them, good, bad, or indifferent, the stuff that's going on with them internally and externally. There are people that depend on Uber. They rely on Uber. They love Uber. They prefer Uber over taxis and buses and trains and things like that. In London... The people have spoken. They are not happy with these new laws. They are not happy with them banning Uber. So they have come together and they protested this. <clears throat> and they tried, they're putting a campaign together to try to get Uber back. Now, you're not Uber. Nowhere near Uber. Do you have, if something of yours is outlawed or deregulated or whatever, do you have a strong enough customer base where people will come and fight for you to, enough to make a difference, enough to show up, show out, and get a reversal of a decision? We all can't say that. I can't say that. None of us can say that. We're not over. But my point is, if you're one of those companies that are facing government regulations that are impeding the way you do business, if you have a strong enough client base and allies that will rally to your defense, you have a 50-50 chance of getting back to what you were doing. But if you don't, dead on arrival. Once they say it's done, it's done. That's why it's important to build your client base, build your community, build your following, build your brand. And make sure that you're keeping it consistent. Make sure that you, you're offering a value to people to make them want to continue to do business with you. And then pay attention, it's just a little something extra, but pay attention to what they're asking for so you can meet those needs. So why does it matter and what can you do about it? <clears throat> so we talked about Blockbuster. What they could have done, it mattered. Well, let's start with why it mattered. It matters that they were not paying attention to the direction of the market and they weren't paying attention to customer demand. It matters that they were not opening up to new technologies and disruption. There's a saying that Mark Cuban says on Shark Tank, and you guys know I've said this several times. You have to wake up every single day thinking about ways to kick your own ass. What that means is, where can I do better? How can I exceed what I did last month? 
what are areas that I can become a rock star if I just focus on this, this particular angle? What are competitors doing that I need to do better? What can I do? What am I doing now that I know I can do 100 times better? You have to always be thinking of ways to kick your own ass. That is how you stay relevant. That is how you stay in business. That is how you stay fluid. So write that down, please. Blockbuster didn't do any of that. They decided, we know what we're doing. We need all these storefronts. Storefronts are becoming a thing of the past. Now, my personal opinion of retail and storefronts and things like that, I wouldn't say goodbye just yet to them. I think people are starting to get more localized and want to have that shopping experience. Not everybody wants to just click a button and get a drone delivery. Some people like that experience. Now, me, myself, I personally, I like to be able to go into a store, feel the product, look at the product, smell it, touch it, see it, try it on, taste it, whatever it is. I prefer that. A lot of people do. We're moving ahead in technology, but it doesn't mean that other things have to fall to the wayside as long as they do things to keep up with the adjustment. I'm fine with Amazon purchasing Whole Foods and getting into that market as long as they don't try to close all the Whole Foods stores and only force you to shop online and make themselves the only place of choice. I had a problem with Amazon. I had some issues as an author and publisher with Amazon. As a consumer, it's good. I have a problem with the fact that Amazon drove the pricing so that they put a lot of bookstores out of business. Businesses, small businesses, companies, these are things that people put their blood, sweat, and tears in, and they drove them out of business. And I blame the consumer because what do we do? Do I have my phone with me? No, I don't have my phone with me. But what do we do? We go into a store, we're on our phones, like, oh, wait, let me see if I can find this cheaper. And you scan it. I'm not condemning you. I'm not pointing fingers and I'm not saying you're a bad person. You kind of are, but I'm not saying that you're a bad person. I understand the need to want to find a bargain. I understand the need to want to get the best price, but I think that we're so wrapped up. The consumer is wrapped up in their own individual personal need and you have every right to be, but we forget about the bigger picture. As those stores lose customers, they lose sales. As they lose sales, they lose market share. As they lose market share, they lose employees. As they lose employees, they lose locations. People lose jobs. It's a chain reaction is what I'm saying. So what, what could Blockbuster have done to change that? They could have stayed up with technology. They could have still had their stores. They could have had kiosks like the Redbox. They could offer subscription services like Netflix. They could have added a combination of different things. So what I'm saying is learn from them and look for ways to diversify. Now, I've said this before. McDonald's is known for hamburgers. That's what the first thing you think about is hamburgers. I'm not going to go into all the different kinds of businesses that McDonald's is. Those of you who are in my academy, you already know that. But at the bottom line is any child, any adult in any part of the world, when you say McDonald's or when you say hamburger, automatically they think McDonald's. But McDonald's is trying to keep up and keep relevant. They're staying up with the course of change. They have kiosks in store where you can order before you get online and go before you go to the register. They have apps where you can order before you even reach the store. They still have their drive throughs for people who are in a hurry and want to just breeze through. They have their in, in-store in facilities where you can go inside and order up at the counter and, and take your time. And you know, you ever see those annoying people who... It's Big Mac, chicken sandwich, fish sandwich, or chicken nuggets, or a wrap. What is there to decide about? Why are you staring at the board, at the menu, for like 20 minutes? Get out the way and let people order, but I digress. But they stay ahead of it. They stay, even with the health craze, with people wanting healthier food, people wanting to give their children better foods, they switch it up. There's fruit, there's juice, there's milk, there's water, there's... You know, they're trying to stay on top of every trend. I don't know how it's going to work in the long term, but their stock prices are doing very well right now. But they're not obsolete. Not yet. Not yet. So think about it. How many different ways can I service my customer? What can I offer them? How can I keep them coming back? How can I adapt to what's going on in the marketplace and what's going on with technology and what's going on with 
what my clients are asking about. Next case case study I'll talk about is Toys R Us. You know, I'm gonna we, we're at the 20 minute mark, so I'm gonna try to wrap this up quickly. Toys R Us has just made big news in the paper. They're about to file for bankruptcy. How many of you remember KB Toys? I know you remember KB Toys. <clears throat> KB Toys was kind of like I hate to say this, and if every, anybody gets offended by this, oh, well, I'll get over it. KB Toys was like the bootleg Toys R Us back in the day. Yes, it was. It was. It never came anywhere close to FAL Schwartz. May they rest in peace. I miss that store. But they were not a Toys R Us. They were the low price discount variation. They were the dollar store version of Walmart, if that makes sense. That's what they were. But Toys R Us, they started facing competition. Then they started facing their biggest competition, which is what? Amazon. Because what? Chris is, we're parents. Most of us are parents. I'm a parent. Okay, I'm a parent now of an older, an older a young man, excuse me. But when he was a child, the last thing I wanted to do was in November, December, hit up the stores, go to Toys R Us, try to find his toys. It was a pain in the ass. I'm sorry. It is what it is. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be. I get around Christmas time, especially like if I'm visiting New York. I love my home. But going to 34th Street, going to Macy's, going to Toys R Us, going to any store around the holidays is torture for me. So Amazon came in handy where you can just look at your stuff and say, oh, 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 what? little Johnny wanted the little Power Ranger. Wait, wait. Oh, hit the heaven at Amazon. And you order it on your iPad or your phone. Toys R Us did not stay up with this. Yes, they built the website, e-commerce site, but they didn't build the customer experience. Customer experience is another reason why companies become obsolete. Customer experience technology, not staying up with the times, all of these were dooms and, and cheaper prices from competition were doomsday signs for Toys R Us, which is why they're now filing bankruptcy. Now, someone asked a question a couple of days ago about, well, what could have done differently? There's a, a myriad of things that they could have done differently that I offered to that conversation. One of the things I would say is I would shut down some of the stores, consolidate, have a flagship store in one location and have less chain locations, make it more exclusive. Write that down for you, it might work for you guys, you never know. Make it more exclusive, develop a customer experience, bring in some stuff. We got too many things in the movies nowadays where you can have some kind of affiliate, affiliation with them. Look at what McDonald's does, again to McDonald's, with the uh, Disney, with Marvel, with all of those, whenever there's a big kids movie out, Who's the first one to have the toys in, in their little kids' meals? McDonald's. Toys R Us could have learned from that and figured out how can we create in-store experiences. Not that, not that hard to figure it out. That's just some of the stuff that they could have done. But think about it. Toys R Us is, is on the slippery slope to bankruptcy. I think they have a chance and opportunity to pull themselves out of it if they have the right teams in place, if they take the right initiatives, and if they pay attention to what customers are asking for. So learn from their mistakes, learn from their experience. You can figure it out too. Now, you might be saying, I don't make toys. I don't sell clothes. I don't sell hamburgers. I don't sell books, well, some of us do. If you can't pick and look at some of the examples I've given you today and find lessons in those and rework them to work for you, why are you in business? You have to always be evolving, always be thinking, always be strategizing, always be planning. I can find a business, and I said this to, to everybody that, I, that I've talked to in a business world, I can find a business lesson in any situation, a social situation, a personal situation, a business situation, a, a political situation. Always seek to find the business lesson in everything and then figure out a way to adapt it to you. Not necessarily step by step, but take elements from other strategies to weave your own. If you can't do that, you don't need to be in business, <laughs> honestly. Um, the last one I wanna talk about is, we talked about Uber, we talked about Blockbuster. Um, I talked about their experiences and their challenges, um, what made them obsolete, struggle, and all this other stuff. Um, you have to always be thinking about your market. You have to be thinking about market share. 
You have to always be thinking about what can I do again to kick my own ass? What can I do to ensure that I'm not obsolete? You need to be able to figure it out. If you can't figure it out, then you need to get the help that will help you do it. Hire the people that can help you do it. No more or I'm go am I going to let you be lazy and go with, I'm going to buy a package, I'm going to buy this course, or I'm going to buy this marketing person to help me out. No, as the owner of your company, as the captain of your destiny, it is your job, it is imperative that you stay on top of these kind of subjects. It's imperative that you sit down at least once a month and work on strategy with your team. You have to pay attention to what's going on in the world. That includes international. Because believe me, London is across the pond right now, and it doesn't affect us because we still have Uber here. But what happens if it comes to your town? What happens if your mayor decides, I don't want it in my city? What happens if your governor decides, we're going to ban this, this is no good? Not saying I agree or disagree. I'm saying it could happen. So always be prepared. So with that said, I, I hope you guys have gotten something out of this. Um, I hope it's made you think and rethink the way you do business. Um, I'm always extending invitations. If you guys want to join Mogul Chicks, there's the general membership, which is $125 a month. There's the premium membership, which is $450 a month. Um, valuable, valuable stuff you get with these memberships. You can go to the member page at mogulchicks.com slash join dash mogul dash chicks. And also, if you're not ready to make that yet, that leap yet, there's Mogul Chicks Academy. If you want to learn how to redo business, rethink business, and grow and scale and become invested ready and expand and mature as a businesswoman, Mogul Chicks Academy. We begin in October. We have financing available. We have packages available. We have full pay. We have different options. So don't box yourself out. If you're interested, we can find a way to get you into Mogul Chicks Academy, mogulchicksacademy.com. And then make sure, of course, you're tuning in to our Mobile Chicks radio show, radio network, and our Mobile Chicks magazine. Um, yeah, I am promoting all things Mobile Chicks, <clears throat> excuse me, because that's what I do. That's who I am, and I can do that. And it's my Facebook Live, so I can do that. But seriously, I would love to, to help anyone figure this out, navigate the course, build a blueprint for their business, for their company. If you need to schedule a consultation with me, I will do a 15-minute discovery session with you and decide. we can decide then and there what you need. And then if I'm the one that can help you or we can help you, um, send an email at info at mogulchicks.com or you can reach out to us, 347-450-7609. Um, or tweet me at Talent Diva or leave me a message here on Facebook Live. But I look forward to seeing you guys. Make sure you tune in Friday for the next Mobile Chicks radio show. Um, Mobile Chicks Academy, ladies, I will see you tomorrow. And let's start changing the way we do business. Let's give ourselves a fighting chance, y'all. Let's grow and scale companies that we can leave building, we can build to leave lasting legacies and generational wealth. So I'm Adrian Graham, and I will see you later. Take care. Bye bye.